Hi guys, welcome to CA Inter Financial Management. We are doing a chapter of ratios. All our MCQs for costing and FM are coming on our YouTube channel. Aim is only one. So therefore, there is one part of your entire syllabus whereby you have confidence to be getting complete marks. Mind you, the questions that will be coming in exams might not be completely same as whatever are there in the module. So therefore, whenever I try to be discussing, I try to say the logic. So therefore, if anything here and there also comes, you all are well prepared for that. Okay. Also advise you all to be joining our telegram channel for all the updates for CNT costing and FM only. Okay, so let's do this. So what does Q ratio measure? Okay, so what does Q ratio measure? Four options, please. Relationship between market value and the book value per equity share. Okay. Second option, proportion of profit available per equity share. Okay. C, overall earnings on total assets. Okay, the last one. Market value of equity as well as debt in comparison to assets are the replacement cost. Now, just few things over here. In case you know the answer, this is the right time to be commenting, please. So therefore, comment right now. So, uh, first of all, what do you mean by Q ratio? Q, uh, Q ratio was made by a guy called as James Tobin. So therefore, this ratio is also called as Tobin's Q. Okay, Tobin's Q means Tobin's Q ratio. Now, A, relationship between market value and book value per equity share. That is simply how many times the share is trading as in comparison to the book value. What is book value per equity share? It is face value of equity share plus the proportionate reserves in surplus. Okay. Minus miscellaneous expenses, if any. Then part B, proportion of profit available per equity share. I guess this is exact definition of EPS. So therefore, A and B cannot be the answer. Okay. C, Overall earnings on average total assets. This is ROTA, return on total assets here. Yeah. So therefore, that's not whatever this ratio means. Now, this ratio means what? This ratio is something like this. Now, this gentleman who had devised, uh, devised this ratio, that is James Tobin, he told that this ratio I'm going to be calculating as follows. It is market value of equity plus liabilities divided by average, sorry, div uh, divided by asset replacement cost. To give you what do you mean by numerator and what do you mean by denominator? Say that you have issued 1 lakh equity shares. Okay, its current value, sorry, its face value is say 10. But it is getting represented in the stock exchange or traded at stock exchange at 50 rupees. So therefore, in the numerator, I'm going to be taking market value, how many shares you have issued, okay, into the market price, okay, say 50 rupees, okay, plus same way for the liabilities also, okay, if your liabilities like debentures and all are getting traded in stock exchange, then you all can take that, sir, if they are not getting traded, then, then you can take whatever is the value as per your books of accounts, means your book value, okay, so therefore, this is the numerator divided by asset replacement cost, now, asset replacement cost means what, suppose, you had purchased some machine for 5 lakh rupees say three years ago okay now that same kind of machine if you want to be purchasing now no say that it will be only costing you say two lakh rupees then the denominator will be writing two lakhs here the replacement cost has fallen okay I'll give you the opposite uh, opposite example suppose you had purchased some land for 20 crore rupees few years ago now if you have to purchase the same land again okay replacement cost means whatever is the cost to replace that asset okay so then in that case whatever amount that you have to be paying now to acquire that kind of a land then that should be taken in the denominator okay so therefore market value tells you what is the market value of your entire company this is also called as market value of the firm in case you all have done cost of capital chapter this thing is also represented as v okay v if you'll remember in Modi, Glani and Miller approach, you have VL and VUL. So therefore, this is that V asset, the value of the firm. That is value of equity plus debt uh, divided by asset replacement cost. So whichever are your assets, if suppose the value of an asset has increased, same case of land, then in that case, like, you know, you take whatever is that value. If it has decreased, you take that particular value. Okay. Now, the guy who had made it, okay, now he told something about it. And what is that something he told? This ratio represents the relationship between market value and the intrinsic value. Okay. Intrinsic value means uh, market value is a numerator. Intrinsic value means true worth. Okay. See, suppose you had purchased some asset for 5 lakh rupees, say many years ago. But if you have to purchase a similar asset today, so it is say rupees 3 lakh rupees. Okay. So therefore, the correct value is 3 lakhs. To give you in a very simple words, you purchased say iPhone last year for 1.5 lakh rupees. Today, if you have to purchase the same model again, 
it's only say 70,000. So in the denominator, you're going to be taking 70,000 because 70,000 represents the true worth as of today. Okay. Now, what did he say? Now, this might be true, might not be true. That is, he told that equilibrium is when. Equilibrium means balance. Okay. So balance is when this Q ratio is exactly equal to 1. Okay. So if this ratio is exactly 1, we say that the company is in equilibrium. But if ever it is greater than 1, then James Chauvin had told like, you know, that the company in this case is overvalued. So therefore, such shares could be sold because they are overvalued. If ever Q ratio is lesser than 1, he told that the stock is undervalued, then in that case, the share should be purchased. Now, these things might not be true in real life. This is a very old formula that James Tobin had made. I forgot the year. It is in 1960s or 70s. I'm not very sure. Okay, but uh, it works in some cases, not in all the cases. So if you're trading on stock exchange, please do not compute this. And based upon this, okay, don't try to be trading. I will not be responsible and James Tobin will definitely not be responsible in this. Okay, so out of the four options that were there, A, B, C, I myself had discarded. And I guess D is whatever the formula is all about. So therefore, answer should be D over here. Yeah, that's the correct answer. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Take care.